You're listening to The Dating Den with dating and relationship badass and best-selling author Marnie Batista. Every week, you'll get the raw truth from top experts and real people on the important dating, sex, and relationship issues you want to know about. So if you're ready for true talk that's authentic and unfiltered, and you're not afraid to be called out on your <clears throat> stuff, then you're ready for what's next. Ladies, ladies, welcome to my very exciting dating den. We're here in the den. It's a lovely afternoon here in California. And I have, by the magic of technology, brought Victoria into the dating den <laughs> all the way from New York. So welcome, Victoria. Well, thank you for having me. I'm honored to be here. I'm a fan of your show. <laughs> I love that. And I love that Victoria just reached out and said she loved the show. And the next thing, she's a guest on the show getting help. So I love I mean, that. I, this is genius. Yes. No, I'm very excited. So thank you so much for having me. Cool. So we're going to we're gonna get into it. And what I love about Victoria is, um, you know, she thought she had one problem, but then she basically followed my directions. <laughs> I really uh, did. <laughs> I'm not joking. I did. <laughs> and we can, we'll actually talk about that. We'll talk about what was the, the, mm -hmm. the pivotal thing that you did differently. Because the result is that now you've been dating a guy for a few months. She's uh, yes. a New Yorker. She's a successful woman, woman. And I love, you know, I meet so many people from New York and they are like, no, Marty, you don't understand. Actually, there's no men in New York. And oh, so <laughs> once again, Victoria is proving me wrong. There are, <laughs> there are actual quality men there. She likes him. Um, they have progressed to the ding dang and the wing wang. Yes. Like it was sweet. He's inviting her to do, you know, like into the inner circle. Yeah. Um, and you're we waited to sleep together. That was a huge thing. Huge. Okay. So she's do she's dating her her <laughs> ass is dating with dignity. Um she's... Yes, I did. I dated with dignity. <laughs> That's so good. And so you're but you're in your forties and like you still, yeah. you know, kid thing is still on the table. So you want to be really um a fit efficient in this relationship yeah. uh, with while maintaining your femininity and, and not being like a crazy control freak. Where is this going? Where is this going? <laughs> right. So, there you go. Yeah, awesome. um, it's hard. Okay. So let's, <laughs> let's back it up just a little bit. So, sure. So, you know, when you first started listening to the show, you were sort of like feeling kind of crappy because maybe you missed your last best chance, you know, mm -hmm. when you're, when you're, uh, your was your college sweetheart? Asked you to marry uh, him? Yes. My college sweetheart asked me to marry him in my 20s. I'm sure everyone has a similar story. And I was just, I dated him for several years. And I don't know, looking back, I just kind of fell out of love with him. I don't know what to say. Or we were, we went in different directions. And I thought, I was just very cavalier. I'm like, I'll find him better. And I'm like, oh my God, like t so many years later, I'm like, wow, maybe I should have married him. Yeah. But I'm actually glad I didn't. I'm yeah. glad I didn't. It would have not, I would have been divorced right now. So it's fine, but it's not easy. It certainly is not easy. That's well, all I can say. And I think we do that, you know, the older we get, and I have lots of clients who like, that's their, when they lay in bed at night, they're like, Fuck. Maybe I, you know, maybe I, know. I was being too I picky. Maybe I should have totally. gone. Maybe I was kind of a bitch to that guy. Yeah. Um, so it's great to be reflective, but the bottom line is you sort of decided to hold your head up and move forward. So you had met this guy that you're dating now and he was sort of like you weren't sure if he was looking for the same thing. So what did you do that was different that you really applied from really dating with dignity? Um, okay. Let's see. What did I do different? Well, first of all, I did not sleep with him and I'm telling you that was not easy. Okay. Um, I think that I really waited and, um, I just really made a, just a standard of, of how I wanted to be treated. And I, the reason why I liked him for the first place is because he adhered to that standard first. He was such a gentleman when I first met him, he, you know, escorted me home in a cab in the opposite direction. We went to movie and I just thought, wow, this guy, you know, comparatively to so many men that I meet, it was just definitely out of the higher league. So I think we both started on a le different level. Okay. But um, I think that I, God, you know, I just think that I just didn't, I, I, I promised myself that I would not like try to sell myself to him. I've, I've said to myself, like, I am the value already. <laughs> yeah. And I think in other words, like, I don't have to market my value to this person. I am like... If he doesn't like who I am just from being myself, that I know that you, that's something that you talk about on your show too, being authentic, you know, practicing authenticity is, it takes a little work. It's a little hard, but I think 
I really tried to stick to that. And it's just, he's going to like me for that. And if he doesn't, then he can just float away and that's fine. And I'm fine with it. That's it's being comfortable huge. with either way, you know, it's just, I'm not going to try to sell myself or feel no needy girl, you know, just, I don't need to call him. I can just be charming and, and have a wonderful time on the date. And that should be enough. Totally. And I was a little proactive too. I, and you, I think you had said that also, it's just, this is not the 1950s. This is not, um, what's that book that's the rules, you know, right. you have to be a little proactive in the modern times, especially in New York. Women are so aggressive. Everyone's aggressive, men and women. So I think you need to kind of assert what you want and just follow up, but still be very kind of not lighthearted, but just, it's hard. It's hard. You well, know, I it think, was definitely a little artful dance. It wasn't easy. <laughs> and, and there's a huge difference between being aggressive and being assertive. Yes, there right? is. Absolutely. Like aggressive mm-hmm. is like, so where do we stand? You know, and, totally. um, you know, and assertive is, you know, this is what I'm looking for and holding that and seeing if someone is going to j- jump in. So, so you, you decided to sleep together and was that like, did it just happen? Were you aware that it was exclusive at this point or how did that go down? Okay. Um, how did it happen? We, um, were not, um, you know, we didn't have some big talk. It was just, um, it was just like we, after like, you know, so many dates, it just kind of happened one night and we were, and it was just, I was at, we, I went to his house and it was just a little more like personal and that's how it happened. And, 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 and it was nice because we kind of waited. It wasn't like we slept together. Although we, it, we almost, it was, there were a couple like near slips, I'll put it yes, that way. Right. <laughs> but I really just didn't want to, because it's just like, it's not going to pay off when you don't know that person well enough, you know? Mm. So I just, uh, but it's, I think it's very hard for men, actually. I think men get very like, what's going on? Does she not like me? Or what is this? Like, so I think that was hard too. I thought I almost like, but then on the, it's just, it's not easy. It's not easy. But, um, so yeah, I just you know, listen to what you're he would just it's various topics he would speak about one of them. Like, I think you were with another co-host man, male, I think. And they were talking about how, like, he, you actually did some role playing, which I thought was very. Yes. Oh, with Christian. Right, where, right, right, yeah. but yes, because it's so hard. I think no one ever talks about these like, these um, situations and how to handle them. So it was just like when he asks you. You know, let's go to this wedding. Like, who wouldn't want to go to a wedding with a someone who asks you on a date? That's wonderful. But then you responded in a way that was like, I can't remember what you said, but it was just you didn't, you, you weren't sleeping together yet. You were still that intimacy was still getting to know each other. I mean, one night we actually did like have a little time, and I did not let him sleep over. And I, I did think about your show. I'm like, I don't want to wake up in the morning. How awkward! Like, I don't know him that well, and like, it's right. like it's it's like sexy yes. and romantic at nighttime, but in the morning, it's like not glamorous. And I was like, I do not want to wake up in the morning, just like rolling out of bed next to this person that I don't know well enough yet. You know, that might kill, not that, that might not be an asset here. Well, right. So here's the thing. So it's a bunch of, it, it, this is key, oh, listeners. Um, it is a series of small decisions that are in honor of your value and really yeah. how you want the relationship to go. So, and I think the other point that I want to highlight is you weren't like, I'm not sleeping with you and I'm not going to do anything but kiss you right so Mm -hmm. because men need to know um and i think i can't remember which one of my guests said this and maybe it was matt boggs or christian but it was like they have to understand like on every date that there's a possibility you know like yes it's like it's like coming around they get yes yeah so (laughs) otherwise they're like what's wrong with his bitch okay so yeah totally which you know so you and that comes from being feminine and flirty and and that balance that fine dance okay so you're you're in a relationship he's inviting you to do stuff um You've slept over and yeah. you heard him refer to you as his girlfriend. Yes, that was very nice. Yes. Yeah, so I, I lucked out. I didn't even have to ask him. I was like, thank you. I overheard it. Perfect. Okay, awesome. And have you like, have you said boyfriend? No, no. I'm still, you know, no, I have not yet. Okay. It's, why um, has the opportunity well, not this come is, you know, up or are you just The opportunity has not come up and we haven't really discussed it yet. I mean, this is something that, you know, I'm still, I'm, you know, this is where I, I as I said, as a person, I'm still kind of uh, not shy, but just, I don't know. It's just, it's very hard. That's why I wanted to ask your advice about when you kind of Bring have it up. Like the talk, yeah, the bring it up conversation. You know, it's just like, what's going on? Where are we go? I, it's tough, tough. 
Well, do you here's, have any yes, I do. So, I, and I appreciate you sort of walking us through that to bring everybody up to speed because, uh, and this happened over about three months, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, and I, because one thing that I do say with Christian is the slower you go, the faster you get there. So, so three mm-hmm. months to this point. Now, here's sort of the the missing piece. I think is that I always say that if you are going to invite someone's ding dang into your wing wang, then you shouldn't <laughs> you shouldn't be scared to talk to them. That's true. You're right. Because it's kind of personal, just saying. Very. Right? And so, and, yeah. and, you know, there's that. And then there's, and I love that you also pointed this out. There's like, you know, there's that waking up in the next morning with someone and like having morning breath and having mascara like underneath your eyes. Yes. And then like going to the freaking toilet, you know, and totally. like, do they hear me peeing? I mean, uh-huh. there's all of, so you're doing all these intimate things. So the question is, why are you afraid I know. That's true. What's, I, I, what's the I, answer? Yes. Why are you afraid? Um, I guess you're afraid that person's going to pull away from this kind of bold conversation that would make them kind of not annoyed, but just kind of like, whoa, like, however, just as you pointed out, they've had, you know, you've, sh- <laughs> yeah. However, you att- <laughs> you're right. There, there should not be the fear factor when they've, they've been in, you know, you've slept together. My God, that's, they've had that opportunity. Why couldn't you just have a conversation? It's well, right. And, and this is a really important piece because we're talking about um, physical intimacy in a relationship that we want and emotional intimacy. And in order to have intimacy, um, requires vulnerability so that the meaning mm-hmm. of vulnerability and this is sort of my my version of a Brene Brown who I love um, definition is you know saying something when we don't know how it's gonna go mm-hmm. that's real vulnerability so what I hear you saying correct me if I'm wrong is you love the physical intimacy of course and in the relationship with the guy who might be the father of your children, you also want emotional intimacy. Right. Yes. Okay. So what needs to happen? How do you need to feel? How do you need to be to feel like you can share with him your true self and your deepest desire? I mean, I I, I think you, I don't know. I I'm, I'm just waiting for that right moment to kind of, speak about where things are, but it's, it's, I mean, it's, I'm kind of inferring it, but I also feel like it's would be nice to have like a direct conversation. Well, yeah, because when I interview, um, but do you, do you agree with that? Like, that's what I would like to ask. I, you, I do. I, no, I do. And you I do. think that there, I think based that, on all the people that you've interviewed. I'd like yeah. To know. <laughs> yeah. Because when, and, and I did an interview with Marnie Kinris, who's a dating coach for men. And I can't remember what the name of the episode was called, but you know, she's like, Men get so irritated because women expect that they're, you know, supposed to read our minds. Mm -hmm. Right. And so here you, you're saying, you know, I'm waiting for that right time. So I feel the right conditions. So let's just, I'll play, you know, play along. So what are the right conditions where Victoria is like, now I feel safe. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. I guess take a guess first. Okay. When he takes it up first, I guess that would be the when I Why? really feel safe. Okay, so let's say nine months go by. Well, I would not. Okay, that I will put my foot down. I'm not letting six months go by. Like we're that I put a timeline on it because in my head I'm like, no way, I'm not letting. No. Okay. So I did that. I've done that before. Like six months of just floating around, and I'm like, nope, that was like called a waste of time, and I'm not going to do that. Okay, so can I can I kick your ass a little bit? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> You put this poor guy, he, you are, you've given him an ultimatum, but he doesn't know about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't really, okay. So energetically, your vibe is, listen, buddy, you got right. six months to figure this shit out and bring it up. And if you don't, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and by the way, I think you'll start to get annoyed and resentful Two months later, three. I mean, when does the resentment start? Like when, when are you talking to your girlfriends? Like, why is this guy not saying anything? Yeah. Well, I felt like I I was getting there before. Like, I was just like, what is going on? Like, I can't not speak with him that often. Like, 
and then it just shifted. So. It shifted. Okay, so let's <sighs> let's talk about that. Let's break it down. What did you do, say, or how are you being that you think created the shift? Um, I think I was proactive, actually. I think by me, I think you're kind of right. I think that men can't tell sometimes they need a little guidance too, or the woman has to be proactive also. Yeah. So I think that I was initiating like really nice dates and like fun things to do and showed him that I really liked him. Actually. I think when I really made like an effort of, you know, he doesn't have to just swoon me. I was doing really nice things for him. Then we kind of, he was much more like it would just escalate it more. Well, yeah, and that's a really great point because it's like men, one of their pet peeves also is like, how many hoops do I have to jump through? Exactly. I mean, the poor guy was like so chivalrous. I was like, I got to give do something nice in return. Yes, you have to meet his energy and you have to really, because men are human, I know we forget, but they they need encouragement and he needs yes. to know, wow, like <laughs> she's giving back and she's really yes. showing me she cares. So he felt confident. Okay, so yes. if we apply. I think that's what it is. I think I gave him confidence. That's exactly right. Okay, so let's. Like he was a little bit insecure too. Yeah, so he's still the same guy. Yeah, I know. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, do you have a timeline? Like, I just feel like I know. No, because <laughs> I'm very I'm timeline not, oriented. Like, I know that's. I'm not giving him an ultimatum. So here's, we're not doing that. So this is about you and what you mm-hmm. want and what you want to create. So. If we were going to put you on a timeline, since you like timelines, you can have one for mm-hmm. yourself. Mm-hmm. What is your timeline? When do you need to know where this is going and does he want kids and all of these kinds of things that you want to ask about? I, I mean, definitely in the next couple months, like in the next, like by five months or six. If I don't know by six months, then I'm definitely out. Well, right. But so we don't want to wait till six months because I think you're actually going to start to get nervous and uncomfortable and pull back and be weird. You're right. Okay. Okay. Then I guess maybe in the next month. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I mean, I guess six months, half of that would be four and a half months, like another like six weeks. I guess I have to find out the next couple of weeks. That I mean, to me, especially since summer's coming and everything like that, I would say yeah. like maybe by the end of May or the beginning of June feels like when you would start to be like, uh, waiting yeah. for it to happen. Yes. Okay. That's, that's good. It's a seasonal thing. I like that better. Seasonal is good. And, and you know, it's really, yeah. and there's, there's, um, progression, right? Like I remember when I was dating my husband first, it was like, are we going to be exclusive? Okay. Um, then it was, did like, you have a talk with him? Can I ask? Yeah, did you have we, oh, you we did. did. Oh. Well, he really wanted to, he's uh British. And so there's, mm-hmm. there's a cultural sort yes. of thing. And so he, in, you know, and where, where he was from, you don't really like date and you definitely don't date other people. You don't date multiple mm-hmm. people at the same time. So after like five or six weeks, he was like, you know, I want to be exclusive. Are you dating other people? And I was like, wow, oh. he's said it to you. He's yeah. So lucky. Well, I was like, I don't know if I'm ready yet. Um, <laughs> and then I, it, it sort of, I decided that I did a couple weeks later and then, so we were exclusive, but then we, we waited to have sex cause I really wanted to feel like I really got to know him. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, um, I was waiting for him to say, I love you. Yeah. That's the one that I love. That's, that's the that big benchmark too, for me. If you didn't yeah. say that in six months, I'm out. Yeah. So, so it took Jeremy like five plus months to say, yeah, it. That's, you know, and I would, and I would literally like look him in the eyes and you know, that feeling where you feel like you're thinking so loud, they can hear you. You're like screaming. Yeah. I was screaming. I love you. I love you. <laughs> I'm so in love with you. And then I was like, fucking say it anyway. So, um, but what I'm saying is we create, we co-create the energy that makes the guy feel safe. Mm-hmm. So you want him to step up. Yes. Okay. So from what you said worked before, it's showing him you really care. Yep. Um, letting him know how you feel with your words. So you mm-hmm. can say things like, I love how this is progressing. I really enjoy spending time with you. I feel so safe with you. You make me laugh. Like this is just, I feel so happy. Really letting him know mm-hmm. that you are feeling safe and comfortable. That's good. Makes sense? Yeah, very much. Okay. So, and then I want to give you some words too, because let's say it's like May 27th. Mm -hmm. (laughs) 
<laughs> yes. You're away for the weekend. It's a memorial. Mm-hmm. It's a memorial day. Mm-hmm. Victoria's thinking. Oh, I really like him so much. I really, I really want to know where this is going. And it's almost June, and I made a commitment to myself. So what are so if you were gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to sort of figure out if you if you had an idea of what you might say that was really validating, but also was an expression of what you want. What what take a guess? What would it look like? Oh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. You have to tell me. <laughs> well, take a, um, take a guess. Really, you, you you've been doing this. For well, a while. I I I don't want to be some melodramatic person. I know that. I just want to be very like just you know just honest and um, make it like you know I'm not pleasant, but it, just, it shouldn't feel like someone's. No, 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 because you're not big deal. Like we need to talk. No, 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 no. I don't want you to say we need to talk. So here's the thing. That like freaks me out when I hear someone say that too. Well, it freaks everyone out. So, so the thing is, (laughs) this isn't, remember, see your, this is really important for you to realize, Victoria, your pattern, your habit is so connected to ultimatums and not getting what you want and having to force someone to choose. Interesting. Yeah, that's probably true. (laughs) Yeah, because I never said that you had to give, you know, that you had to say we need to talk Mm -hmm. my vision is you know you're you're standing you know you're in new york you're maybe by water it's a beautiful night it's a little humid he puts his arm around you you're wearing that cute little summer dress you know (laughs) um and you say you know um i just really love spending time with you i'm at a place in my life where i'm i'm ready to have a a long-term relationship what about you Ooh, i like that Perfect. Right? You lean into him. You're no, like, that's perfect. You're looking at the stars. You're pondering, you know? And yeah. he says, oh, my God, me too. Wow, we want okay. the same thing. Right now you're having a conversation. I le- it sounds great. I- I'm going to steal that. I love you're it. You're supposed to steal it. And everyone else who's listening. <laughs> no, let, but I want to, I wanna like, reverse engineer it. Here's what's really cool. Um, and I, I, uh, I did an interview um with Laura Doyle, who wrote this book called The Surrendered Wife. And I think this really is a a tribute to some of her body of work. And that is what what I've just said is basically all you're doing is you're stating your desire. You don't have Mm. you don't have an expectation of him. It's Mm -hmm. a hope. It's a hope for your life. That's awesome. Right. When a man has freedom to choose, he gets to decide how he wants to respond. Is he going to step up or step out? Mm -hmm. He gets to choose. An ultimatum is a pretend question, Mm -hmm. right? Because there's an expectation associated with an ultimatum. Yeah. No, and it's not fun to be on the reciprocal side. It's very... It's not my, well, how I'd want to be approached in this kind of thing. Anyway, yeah, this is like a, a two forty plus year old grown ups talking about what they want in their life. That's a grown up mm-hmm. conversation, and you're inviting him to just share. And here's the thing: if he says, "Oh my god, like I'm so far away from that," I don't. I've like I don't know. I never saw myself getting married. Like then you're like, "Awesome, I know that. Mm-hmm. We're good. That's true. We're good. Yep." So I think that. The, the bottom line is in your overall question of like, when do I talk about stuff? Mm-hmm. I, I want you to really always ask yourself if you get scared, this guy's knowing me really well and, and I want to like have babies with him maybe, or, you know, I want him to hold my hair when I throw up. I can't be afraid to share with him my heart's desire. That's true. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That sounds good to me. So all you have to do is, Tell him how you're feeling, say what you want, and then stop talking. Yep. Okay, awesome. Sounds great. I love it. So what's your takeaway from our conversation today? Really just what you just said. It's just like that um, it's about stating what you want rather than this, like you said, this ultimatum in your head. It's more about and stating it in a way that's just, you know, there's, yeah, just that that is my ultimatum. That's, That's my takeaway, what you just said right there about how to. Ask for what you want, and there's no, you shouldn't be, the fear factor is not really relevant. Right, because you're safe, and he shows up every day from what you're sharing with me, making you feel safe. So there's yeah. no need for we need to talk. It's time to let your guard down, right? Allow yourself to receive and really enjoy what you're creating together. Yeah, 
Okay, awesome. great. I love it. Okay, so <laughs> me too. Your job is to keep in touch with the show because we want to we want to know what's uh, what's happening. I will. I will. And I thank you so much. I, as I said, I was listening to your show. So it's um, been very helpful. I really appreciate it. It works when you work it, ladies. Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> all right. Victoria, thanks for coming into the dating den. And ladies, if you're listening, if you want to be on the show, reach out. You can always do that. If you haven't had a chance to grab my free book, uh, How Did You Find a Quality Guy uh, Without Having to Go on 200 Dates? Get that at datingwithdignity.com. And in the meantime, don't forget, date with dignity. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.